What's going on, arcade nerds? I got a spear battle zone that I want to get fixed and eventually sell. Okay, I removed those sockets. And, uh, and I also removed a couple other chips that had excessively rusty legs. And uh, I like to do that because you never know if it, if it loses connection somewhere or, or whatever. I also removed these pins on this header right here. Uh, the reason why I removed the header pins is because these often have a bad connection and these original pins often uh, rust or corrode one or the other and they don't solder very well and often people on tempest boards and battle zone boards and so on they will reflow the bottom and over and over and it doesn't really stick well i just replace them put brand new pins there and also um, these pins kind of suck and i'll tell you why they are round now if you replace these with uh, square pins the connect the, the connector will have a better what's the word it will be more of a connection between the pin and the connector uh, more metal will touch so anyways I like to put those square pins in there in its place anyways um, so I guess let's go upstairs and let's uh, wash this thing up okay so now I'm in my kitchen here and I'm going to wash this board. Um, <clears throat> one thing I should mention is don't do this in your sink. I'm going to do it in my sink. And do this outside. And I'm going to do it inside. <laughs> um, uh, it, the chemicals that I'm going to talk about can etch stainless steel. So, you know, keep that in mind. You don't want to mess up your sink. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to dump a little bit of ferric chloride onto this. Uh, ferric chloride is actually what's used for PCB etchant. Um, when they make PCBs in the manufacturing process, they use ferric chloride to eat away the unwanted copper. But what we're going to do is we're going to eat a hair into the wanted traces. So this is ferric chloride, just a little bit of it. I got some on my sink, of course. We're just going to rub that in. Paintbrush. A little ferric chloride, the whole damn board. Now keep in mind, you don't want to let this sit for too long. If you let it sit for too long, it'll eventually eat through the lead or the uh, solder mask. The solder, what's it, geez, what's it called? It was the proper name. Eat through your traces. You don't want that. And if you leave it on for an excessive amount of time, it can actually uh, eat through the uh, exposed copper here and there. You don't want that. Well, you don't want too much of that. So, I'm just going to work this in a little bit. And I'll come back to you in a couple minutes. Alright, so now I'm going to put a little bit of aluminum oxide powder. Aluminum oxide powder and a little dab of dish soap. Let me get my brush here. And I use this brush to clean PCBs I have for a couple years now. But, let that work in, we're going to scrub the whole board.
Let's get this under better light. First I'm going to dry it and then I'll show you downstairs. Unless you can see, everything looks dark in this camera. I'm in my kitchen and it's not the brightest in here. But I think from what I'm seeing here it looks damn near like brand new. Anyways, let me dry this and I'll bring it down to the basement and try to get a better uh, picture of it. Okay, the board is now dry and we are back in my basement. I want to show you those clean looking traces. Now there is some uh, flux here. Uh, I did not use water soluble flux. So, you know, uh, this is no big deal. This does come off. Um, you know, what you can use is uh, denatured alcohol. That's what I use. Or isopropyl alcohol. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, look at that. I mean, it's not perfect. There is some little minor, like, uh, pitting. But, I mean, geez. Compare that to way, however it looked before. Anyways, uh, there's nothing wrong with washing boards. I know a lot of people are afraid to wash boards. Uh, you know, almost every PCB you've ever seen has been washed from the factory. Okay, I got some uh, bipolars here. And what I like to do with these bipolars is I like to put some heat sink plaster on them and actually put a little mini heat sink on top of every bipolar. And so you can get this heat sink plaster for dirt cheap from China. China. And stick them on there. And in about, oh, I don't know, 10 minutes, it'll be on there for good. And probably fully cure in a few hours. But in about 10 minutes, you could, it's on there so well that you could actually uh, remove the chip by holding onto the heatsink. So it's pretty decent. Now, why am I putting heat sinks on these chi on these chips? Well, um, these bipolars get hot. Heat is like uh, it's kind of like the enemy of electronics. Heat kills. So, figure let's uh, keep it cool. Now I am uh, short of pokey. That's the chip that goes right here. So I'm going to have to dig around a little bit and find myself a pokey. Now also, um, <clears throat> these exact heat sinks are sort of expensive for what they are. Um, in general, these are really cheap though, if you know where to look. For example, uh, they sell these little heat sinks that you can put on a Raspberry Pi. And if you buy those, you can buy them in bulk. Let's say a hundred of them for like ten bucks or something ridiculously cheap like that. And they look identical to this. The only difference is they're half the size. So what? Stick it on there. Okay, so uh, let me dig around and try to find a pokey. Okay, we are now in test mode. It doesn't say there's any errors, but when I press these buttons, I don't hear sounds. Press this button here. No sounds. Okay, Kelly, take it out of test mode. Okay, I'm gonna start the game. No sounds. So we have a problem, and I think I already know what it is. I'm going to shoot for the LM324 op amp, and let's see if that uh, fixes things. By the way, I should mention, I was not sure of the state of the pokey that I tested it with in, first, in the first place, and it uh, did not, it also did not have sound. 
And so that's when I tried this Pokey One. This is actually a prototype Pokey One that came from uh, David Schumann. But anyways, it did not have sound. But it also did not start the game when I press start. And the Pokey is what controls that start button. So I slapped in this Pokey One and boom, start button works, but we don't have sound. Now, there is a couple op amps. They're LM324 right here and right here. I'm just going to go ahead and replace them both rather than figure out what's what. Um, and yeah, let's see what happens. And we have two new LM324s. I should mention that uh, it might be a good idea to put heat sinks on these too. Why not? I just don't have any that are really the right size. I think these might look a little, a little corny if they're on there, don't you think? Anyways, there is no replacement for a fan inside any cabinet, especially a Vector. Okay, um, no sound. So, as an experiment, I pulled the Pokey from my other known working aux board and put it in this, and no change. So, no sound. So, <clears throat> I really don't want to build a whole test rig just to figure out something like this, especially if it's... It's probably going to be really simple, right? <clears throat> so, so far, my assumption was the op amp, the LM324, which is the amp that amplifies all the sound, right? And delivers it to the AR. Anyways, um, so we got to figure out what do all these sounds have in common, because these sounds are generated in all different kinds of places, all over the place. So, all of them are out, not just one. Every sound is out. So, what does every sound have in common? Well, this 4066 at L4, right here. This 4066 at L4 here. That's sound enable. See, a lot of these sounds are all grouped together. Explosion out, shell out, engine out, stuff out, stuff. Anyways, um, so they're enabled by this switch right here. This is an analog switch. Um, yeah, I mean, I, you know... <laughs> I would, I would, just by looking at the schematic, we're, here's another explosion, L4, the 4066. So the uh, analog switch literally touches every one of those sounds, and it must go through this switch before it reaches the LM324. So, let's replace that 4066. Okay, moment of truth. And we have sounds. Uh, I don't have fire. Or explosion. I should have had an explosion there too. Okay, just for giggles, Kelly. I have the saucer sound. Just for giggles, go into test mode. stuck sound. T turn the, uh, it might just be something stuck in RAM. Uh, turn it off and back on. Back on. No, it's like a stuck on sound. Turn it off longer, I'm sorry. Longer. Now turn it on. Yeah, it's just something stuck in RAM. Okay. Okay, I'm getting all my boops here. Um... So we don't have explosion and we don't have fire sound. But we're almost there. Let's go back downstairs. All right, it only took two seconds to figure this one out. Let's zoom in. Shell and explosion. Guess what they go through? You get another 4066. This one's at J3. So let's replace that, and I think we'll be good to go. Okay. Uh, take it out of test. And we have fire sound. And explosion sound. I think we're good to go. This one is done.
Okay. Just for giggles, let's put that Pokey One back in just to now since I have doubts that the Pokey One works. <laughs> okay, we now have a Pokey One. The Pokey One prototype. And the cool thing is, um, see, that is our known good working battle zone board, the analog generator. And go ahead and turn it on. And down here is another board that is almost working, I got going. And a cigarette butt. Um, so, let's see if we got sound out of the Pokemon. Yep, we do. Okay. Well, that's that. I guess the last thing to finally do is to do the final cleaning on the PCB. Okay, now, see all this flux residue from all the work we did? I don't want it there. A lot of people will do repairs and leave all this residue and we don't want that. Um, first off, number one, it just kind of looks ugly. <laughs> number two, um, <clears throat> did you know that this flux can pull water from the air? Yes. And that water mixed with the flux can conduct electricity. Now, so in other words, this could cause a trace somewhere to have like a misfire. You know, getting a signal from another trace and so on. Now, that is sort of rare for these boards, but it can happen, <clears throat> especially in analog section. Um, but it can happen. It would be more of a problem with a newer board with closer traces. But I don't like it, and we are going to clean it off. What I'm going to use is denatured alcohol. I'll let that soak for a few minutes. Now you can use isopropyl. It doesn't matter. They both work equally as well. So I'm going to let that soak. I'm going to talk to you for a bit while I wait for it to soak. You like my fancy brush? Anyways, stalling for time. Let's let that stuff absorb. And let's scrub. So why do I use denatured alcohol? If it's just as good as isopropyl. Everyone else uses isopropyl, right? Well, sometimes it's cheaper, and you can get it in larger containers. So, it's more convenient, especially, let's say, um, let's say I make, um, believe it or not, I have built over 1,000 um, Vectrex multi-carts. Let's say I'm building a Vectrex multi-cart. Let's say I build 40 of them. Well, if I'm going to wash it, I want a whole bath of this stuff to wash it with instead of doing it one bore at a time. So it's convenient to buy denatured alcohol for me because you can buy it in bulk. Sometimes it's cheaper than uh, isopropyl, sometimes it's not. They're not the same type of alcohol. Uh, denatured alcohol is actually um, ethanol. It's 85% ethanol, approximately, and 15% methanol, approximately. Each manufacturer can be a little different. But, that's that. Let's get a look. Well, let's dry it so you can see it better. <laughs> well, there it is. I think I will leave the Pokey One prototype board. I think it will leave, it'll leave it on this board to be its final home. But, there's the back, nice and clean. No flux. So let's see if we can make, I'm gonna take a picture and we'll compare this next to what it looked like before I started. Okay, so 
I guess that's it, guys. Um, please subscribe, and have a nice day.